Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 13 The Paladin of the Holy Kingdom. The evil Lord of Wrath and the two Depalgangers indicated that they understood. Very well. Then we'll start when the coin hits the ground. About 25 minutes has passed, so I guess they won't complain even if we start. Ains cast life essence and then took out a gold coin. Of course, this was not a Yggdrasil gold coin, but a trading gold coin used in this world. Will you not buff yourself? Making time to buff yourself is also part of combat training. After replying thus to Doppelwupus Regina, Ains backed away from them, then flicked the coin up with his thumb, so it landed between the two of them. As the coin hit the ground, Ains jumped back, then threw his hands out and shouted. Absolute immunity barrier. He saw the evil lord and the two Depalgangers freeze up for a moment. However, the evil lord and Doppel Yuri immediately rushed in. That was it. That was the right answer. Ains's previous actions were meaningless. There was no ability called Absolute Immunity Barrier in Yggdrasilur at least. There should not have been, as far as Ains knew. Still, Ains had shouted that name not simply to fake them out, but also for a different reason. Ah, it feels like they're a little slow. Could it be that they think something was done to them, and they've become a little timid now? Well, that's what happens when you wonder if you've fallen into the enemy's trap. Their movements were restricted by the uneasiness that came from the fact that such a technique might actually exist in this world. One could say that this feint had succeeded because there were still unknown things out there. Of course, that was not simply because of the unknown. A good example was Ains's ability to create undead. In Yggdrasil, there was no such thing as using a corpse as a medium to ignore the duration on created undead. This aberration had only sprung up after coming to this world. One could imagine that there were many other such changes that had happened in the process of coming to this world from the game. No, only a fool would not think about such things. In other words, making decisions with Yggdrasil knowledge alone was very dangerous. I ought to discuss this with Albedo, and the others, Cossidus included. Ains cast a silent fly spell and began thinking as he retreated to the rear, while keeping a fixed distance from his pursuers. Albedo said destroying the kingdom would take about two years of preparation. Should I collect information until then? Expanding one's nation means expanding contact with the outside. I ought to throw these questions at Albedo and Demiurge and get their opinions. Hmm, illusions seem to be surprisingly powerful, it might be very bad if we don't watch out for them. It feels like you could do a lot with them if you were smart. If I meet a skilled illusionist, I should probably treat them well in order to recruit them. Flitter, whoa. The evil lord had outpaced Ains's fly spell on foot. Unfortunately, flying was not that fast. After taking a punch from the evil lord's maw like fist, Ains fell pain, though it was immediately suppressed. Though he had felt the same way during the fight with Sheltier, he was once again thankful for this body of his that could suppress his pain. Ains could fight thanks to it. After that, the evil lord pursued Ains who had been knocked flying and closed the distance to him. To Ains, this was the worst possible thing they could have done. Yuri has circled around behind me. They're using a pincer attack of two people who can do bludgeoning damage, which is my weakness. Meanwhile, Lopas Regina is keeping her distance and casting spells, hmm, <laughs> that's a buff. Good grief, this is the best way to deal with magic casters. Is this because of the evil lord's combat AI? Or is it because it's choosing moves from the mind of its summoner, Demiurge? Well, that's fine. If they would not let him keep his distance, then he would simply have to make his own space. Greater teleportation. His field of vision immediately opened up, and the city spread below him. Under normal circumstances, he would not have been able to teleport to an unknown destination, but it would be alright, as long as it was within line of sight. Having teleported one kilometer above the ground without any hesitation whatsoever, Ains cast another spell. It was Body of Effulgent Barrel. This spell was exceptionally effective because Yuri and the Evil Lord both did bludgeoning damage. Of course, that's not all there is to it, Ains muttered as he looked to the ground. If Yukubiku Chigama sent a variable talisman Sen were here, the backliners wouldn't be getting beaten up. When playing as a party, skilled aggro managers like tanks would not make mistakes, like allowing the magic casters in the backline to be attacked. During the time when they had stopped playing the game when Ains had gone out to earn the money for Nazark's upkeep by himself, he had used mercenary NPCs to allow him to act with impunity. The only time he had truly fought alone was the battle with Shaltir. Perhaps that was why he could not help complaining. They were quite some distance apart, so he had no idea where the evil lord was, but he had a rough idea of the square's location. While carpet bombing the area with attack spells was a valid tactic, that would be pointless. One could say that the objective this time round was to win in a full-powered contest with the opposition. Why did magic delay teleportation? Come to think of it, I used to get pissed off by the mercenary and PCS support management of aggro. That was probably the devs way of saying please group up with other players or something. 
He then confirmed that something large was going to teleport above him, within the area of the delay teleportation spell the Evil Lord. Thanks to the effect of the delay teleportation, it would take a while before it appeared in the real world. In other words, it meant that these two weak enemies which had lost their strongest shield, were completely exposed before him. In order to weaken the enemy's fighting strength, he ought to defeat the weaker two first. Ains let gravity claim him, and then accelerated further with fly. The added speed of the freefall meant that he was moving quite fast. The air struck Ains' face and flowed past him. At the same time, Ains opened his eyes and observed the square. Though I think hiding in a house would have been better. Ains muttered quietly and then selected Lupus Regina who was proudly standing in the middle of the square as his target. Yuri was some distance away. While she could see him, she did not look like she was prepared to intercept him. Leaving a healer alone was quite frustrating, but Yuri had made the right decision, considering that she had to be wary of area of effect spells. Ains ground to a halt as he skidded across the ground in truth, he would not have been hurt, even if he had crashed straight into it and cast a spell. Ains chose one of the most destructive 10th tier spells in his arsenal, Reality Slash. At the same time, he used a special ability to maximize the spell. While he could have tripled the spell or something similar to do a great deal of damage, it would be very dangerous, while he did not know how much damage the Depalgingers had taken. He had to avoid the possibility of killing them by accident. Maximize Magic. As he raised his hand, his hand was struck and damaged, and the spell fizzled. The mana spent on casting the spell was wasted. What? Interfering with the spell through a ranged attack. Is it some kind of special ability? Perhaps it was because he was undead, or because he was a veteran player, but his confusion only lasted for a moment. Ains immediately analyzed the attack he had received. Neither the evil lord nor Yuri nor Lupus Regina possessed abilities like this. Perhaps it's the world-class item holder who brainwashed Shaltir. And if the Hanzos missed him. If it was a ranged weapon user. If it was her, she could use a special ability to interfere with spells. I fell for it. Ains shouted as he found the answer. Although Yuri closed in and delivered a punch, Ains had already enhanced his defense with a spell, so he did not need to be so wary of her. After all, there was something more important than that. The whole thing was a trap from the start. No Yuri. I see. Here was referring to the square. That was why the Hanzos said the Pleiades were present. Damn it. I was wondering why they said all of us when it was just the two of them. All the points of data made a beautiful line. CZ was attacking now. It was not just Yuri and Lupus Regina who were present. CZ was also on the battlefield. In all likelihood, Solution and Entome were here too. All the Doppel Pleiades were present in the city. No, no, I need to calm down. Doppel CZ was just lucky. It was easy enough for me to resist that because of the level difference between us. She wouldn't be so lucky well, unlucky for me next time. Greater word of curse. The evil lord had finally caught up and cast a spell, but Ains resisted it without any problems. It was only threatening in close combat, so all he had to do was keep his distance. Ains ignored the evil lord above him and ignored Yuri, who had only done minimal damage to him from the start. He lunged straight at Lupus Regina. In that moment, countless bullet bugs flew over from the side. There was no doubt that it was in Toma. He did not even need to use his high-tier physical immunity to stop it. That was because non-magical ranged attacks could not harm Ains. Perhaps if it was a weapon carried by the Pleiades, Ains' immunity would have been defeated, thanks to the massive amount of data within them. The best example of that was CZ and Yuri's attacks from just now. However, certain skills were calculated based on the user's level. Intoma was a prime example, since she possessed many of these user-level based attacks. Intoma was only round level 50, so her attacks did not bother Ains at all. In addition, if all damage from an attack was nullified, none of the writer effects would take place either. Therefore, he could ignore it. Ains did not even spare Intoma a glance as he moved in to finish off the healer, but just then, Solution erupted from her ambush point in front of Lupus Regina. It would have been a futile gesture if she was facing an area of effect attack, but that was the only way to protect the healer. However, Solution had made a fatal mistake. Ains was a magic caster, and did not need to close in to attack. All he needed to do was cast attack spells from a distance. He had to think about why she would charge out from in front of Lupus Regina. Ains had only one aim. He wanted to expose the enemy and reveal whatever card they had up their sleeve. Nairul's not around. He did not understand. She was not among the maid demons who had attacked the royal capital. However, one could not rule her out if all the Pleiades were present. It was possible that they were saving their ace in the hole for the last moment. Still, since he knew what kind of hand the opposition had, there was no reason to continue fighting in the middle of the enemy. Greater Teleportation CZ did not interrupt his spell, and he managed to teleport under a roof within line of sight. I need to remember what Yuri and the others can do. Who should I kill first? Lupus Regina, the healer. Well I need to be very careful of CZ. 
I have no idea where she is, so I'll let the others go first. The evil lord will take the most time, so I'll save him for last. He saw Lepasergina casting a spell on Solution. Had they not pursued Ains because drawing out the battle was not a problem for them? No, it was because they understood that since Ains could move at will with greater teleportation, they could be easily scattered and individually defeated. After all, Ains was hoping for that too. It did not matter if they saw through him. All he had to do was harass them with ranged spells, and then take them out one by one. While CZ the ranged combat specialist was present, she would eventually expose herself if she attacked continuously. Therefore, she would only attack at critical moments. In that case, she would not be so frightening. Or rather. I didn't see her, so let me guess, you're standing in for Narbrel. Ains muttered to himself as he watched the evil lord land. Haha, you've become fat, Narbrel. Shall we call you Gorilla Burl now? And your elements changed greatly too. Well, this is interesting. If the Doppel Pleiades are my opponents. Ains flourished his cape. Of course, there was no meaning to it, he simply wanted to show off in a kingly way. Then I ought to get a little serious. Don't die. Twin maximize magic, really. Just as Ains was about to cast a spell at Lepus Regina, another bullet hit Ains's arm and interrupted his spell. Ha. Impossible. Even if she had succeeded once by luck, she could not have interrupted his spell twice in a row. CZ was far lower level than Ains. Could he have been unlucky enough to fail his resistance check twice in a row? How unlikely were those odds? Or perhaps this was not bad luck, but certainty for instance, if his opponent was not CZ at all. The evil Lord of Wrath spread his fiery wings and closed in on Ains. Yuri came in from the right, and Intoma flew in from the left in a roundabout fashion. What's going on? Why is this happening? Is this some change that occurred after coming to this world? Or did Garnus and give CZ something? Or is it not CZ? What did Yuri say just now? They're sisters, but they're doppel. Pando, ah. The evil lord had closed the distance and then cocked his hand back, preparing to deliver a haymaker. Damn it. I hate people like that who just rush straight in and start punching. If you're a substitute for Narbrel, then attack with magic. You real Well, if the evil lord had really cast a spell on Ains, he would have resisted it, so it would have been boring anyway. Ains did not hesitate, he stepped in before his enemy could fully close the distance. The evil lord had guessed that Ains would flee, so his movement slowed by a beat. Behind him was Yuri, who was probably planning to flank Ains with the evil lord. The strike from the flaming fist was a feint, which was why Ains had managed to evade it by stepping into the range of the blow. The arms whistled past his ears, and the wind in its wake sounded like a scream. A pure magic caster had evaded the attack of a warrior-type monster. While he thought that this would be impossible if he were still a Yggdrasil player, this was not due to luck. As mentioned before, the evil lord had not expected Ains to step into the attack, so he had not used his full force. And then there was another point, which was that this was the result of his training.